Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna do a get ready with me eras tour, Taylor Swift. I already went the day of the concert. I had hoped to film this like in action, but honestly, I was running around. There was glitter everywhere. I was trying to figure out what I was gonna wear. I was so excited. This was a last minute surprise from James because I didn't get tickets. And then I sat on TikTok like a total freak, just watching nonstop Taylor Swift. I love her. I'm gonna share with you guys uh, what the experience was like, some tips if you are going to see the show. It's an amazing show. Oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh, I'm still thinking about it. We're gonna talk about it all and I'm gonna recreate the look that I wore to the show. I, yeah, I have things to say. I need makeup to be on my face right now and I just thought this would be a fun little get ready with me chit chat. Let's hop on in. Okay, so we're gonna first, <laughs> Try to focus and get these puppies put on in the correct angle. These are my Tape Talks stickers. I will link them in the description box, you guys. I use these at night like this, and they do seem to help, but I also love using them um, as a guide for shadow if I'm doing a more dramatic look. I am gonna be busting into this old friend today because it just happened and I'm recreating exactly how I did my makeup for the show. Let me tell you, it was bulletproof, budge proof, not a thing moved and it was hot in the arena. That is like tip number one. You do not need a big coat or anything. Spaghetti strap it. I brought a cute blazer cape with me thinking I was gonna have like some kind of time for a fashion moment. I did not. I was like running to my seats. We made it literally with like 20 seconds to spare. Honestly, that was really stressful, but I knew it would be a long concert. So we ended up skipping the opening acts. I'm gonna go in with eye primer. This is the Luna and Aster Real Glow Eyelid Primer. This stuff is like cement, you guys. Literally it brightens, but it is also like, I don't even know what it does to make your eyeshadow last and not smudge or budge, but this is so good. And I'm into this thing right now where I take a larger brush this is a Real Techniques expert face brush. This is not intended for the eyes, but I feel like, <laughs> I still lost my voice from the concert, excuse me. I feel like this spreads the product around better because if you don't blend quick with this stuff, shoot, girl, you're in trouble. That's gonna drive me insane. I have to start this eye over, going in again. This must like take all the oils off your eyelid or something because it does dry down really like matte, completely matte. There's no tackiness, no nothing, but I do find that it helps your eyeshadow to blend better and wear longer. We need that for Taylor Swift. We're gonna go in first using a Letitia Lamac FF6 and surprise, surprise, I'm actually going into the Ulta eyeshadow palette, the Everyday Faves. I super love this. It's a really, really beautiful palette. I have not stopped using it since I purchased it. Okay, we're gonna go in with kind of a mixture between these two right here. Literally, this is what I did. I just aggressively got ready. I, I don't even know, I pushed it too far. I had a long phone conversation with a friend and then my mom, and then I worked out and I was like, it's fine. What ended up happening before I was going to the concert is me washing half of my hair in my kitchen sink because I ran out of time and I had poor time management, which works. If you ever feel like I need to freshen up, my hair looks greasy, dry shampoo is just not gonna do the job. Section your hair, put half of it in a bun, and then tip your head over in your sink and just wash kind of your bang area. Total game changer. Everybody's like, ooh, what a sleek blowout. And you're like, little do you know that I have poor time management. I'm feeling the stress again of like, I did it so quickly. Like, hurry, Taylor Swift, you know? The concert was phenomenal. I have been to many Taylor Swift concerts. I even did a Madness Monday where at the very end, you see me go to the Speak Now tour. And that was such a memorable experience. James and I went twice. And then I went to the 1989 tour. And then I went to Reputation once with James. And then I did a girl's trip to the AT&T Stadium here in Dallas with some of my best childhood friends to see her 
again, reputation. Uh, my family knows I am a diehard Swifty. I took a break from secular music for a while while I was having my like time away from the internet and like, I don't want anything to influence me. It was a weird era in my life, kind of feeling like the internet just chewed at me so hard and I just needed a break from everything, even things that I enjoyed. And so I kind of went through this weird thing where I was like, I'm never gonna see her perform again. And like her music makes me sad. And I, I just went through this weird thing where I was totally going through utter inner transformation in my life. I got to a point recently about six months ago, like being back at making videos and just kind of simmering down and just kind of reintegrating some things that I love in my life back in my life. Um, we're gonna switch palettes. I'm gonna actually go into this Dior palette right here and just kind of dip into this brown and just keep deepening up the edge. So yeah, I went through this weird thing where anything that like reminded me, like I've never shared this, anything that reminded me of my past, like I didn't want anything to do with it. Like everything was triggering me. I couldn't play piano. I couldn't write anymore. I love writing poetry and music, which is just hobby passion 100%, but I love writing. I love journaling. And I literally had such a time away where like, you know, I was away from the internet, away from making videos, away from James, away from family. And I literally destroyed old journals, like just angry, like ripping out pages, ripping up my poetry. Like it's too sad. I don't like who I was and just like destroying my own art, thinking that it would somehow make me come out of this crazy funk that I was in. If you are ever there, do yourself a favor and hand, <laughs> don't be a crazy artist, hand what you love over to a family member and like revisit it a few months down the line because now I literally like ache. I ache when I think of what I did and I can't bring it back. Anyway, like long story short, Taylor Swift's music has been very much that soundtrack to my life kind of a thing where I just never get sick of her music. I love her lyrics. I love the storytelling. I love the daydreaminess of it. I love her imagination. And I just have so much respect for what she does. She puts on a great show. I've always said that to everyone that's like, oh, really like Taylor Swift? And I'm like, you don't even understand. She outperforms every person I've ever seen live. Like, I don't care, you cannot compare her. She's just the best. We need to switch it up. We need more, more darkness, more darkness, more moodiness. We're going into the Tati Beauty palette. I'm so sorry I had to wear it that night because I just felt like I needed the glitter and I needed to like bring this back from the dead for a moment, which by the way, a lot of you guys are like in the comments telling me you're like, Tati, you need to pull a Taylor Swift and bring back Tati Beauty and bring back the OG palette. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been thinking about those comments recently and thank you. Um, for placing that seed in my brain. I'm gonna go into Ritual, the smaller brush, and we're just gonna kind of do the same thing, just much lower. Where was I? My love affair with Taylor Swift. I literally walked in and I was so overwhelmed. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this set is huge. The stadium is huge. The runway of the stage is really cool. Everybody gets a good you know, show from every angle and the stadium was packed. Um, my husband is amazing. He totally spoiled me, surprised me by getting the tickets that he did, knowing that I just hadn't, I haven't done anything fun like this in the longest time. And he knows how much I love Taylor Swift. So we did it up. We sat in great seats. We did the whole VIP section. I did not, I did not get my VIP kit. I do regret that. If you splurge on the VIP tickets, make sure you go and hunt that puppy down because I then saw it online and I was like, oh, that's cute. Um, anyway, I totally stressed James out because my favorite song of Taylor Swift's is Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. And I was like, if we do not get to our seats when this starts, like, I, like that's my favorite. Like I need, I need to see that. Um, so we made it literally just in time. So here's another tip for you guys if you're going to the show. 
make sure that you give yourself ample time for the bathroom because that line was so long. And let me tell you, I was looking at the set list, which it does change a little bit from show to show, but I was like, I honestly, there's not a moment that I feel like it would be acceptable to go to the bathroom. So I'm gonna need a diaper or something because literally like, what am I gonna do? And so I actually cut liquids at like five o'clock. Like when I woke up and it was Era's tour day, like literally I was chugging water, I'm doing my thing and I'm like, it's five o'clock, liquids are cut. And I was serious about it. And so James got a bottle of water and I'm literally taking like the tiniest sips because I'm like, <gasps> I'm that girl that has to use the bathroom like every hour on the hour. Um, I just don't like the feeling of needing to use the bathroom. It's like so ick to me. I don't like it. So now you know. We're gonna go in with Luna and Aster Dawn to Dusk Gel Eyeliner in black. So I'm gonna go in. And of course, in honor of Taylor Swift, we're doing a wig. Honestly, I want to know what eyeliner her makeup artist uses because it did not budge. Like her makeup did not budge and she went for three hours and 15 minutes, 44 songs, honestly, like, I loved the show. I was concerned for her. I'm like, oh my gosh, she needs a break. You know what I mean? Like, how is she doing this? Is she real? Like, I am so baffled by how she, like, I don't know how she did everything that she did with like the energy that she did. Okay, feeling good, looking good. I do wait to do the glitter until the end. So we're not getting our fingertips in that just yet. I do want to press that matte black on the line to set it. Big reveal. Let's go. I feel pretty okay about it. Needs to be adjusted. Okay, so what I've been doing is taking a little bit of a makeup remover cream on a glass palette, a flat brush. Important that you use a flat brush. Have a paper towel in front of you. I always keep that just right on my vanity so that I can kind of brush off any excess product that I need, whether it's liner or for the face or whatever. And now is where I'm gonna kind of try to get this line a little up. I smile to make sure that the wing is like not like, you know? And I actually like that little thin kind of wispy guy that gets dragged because then when you get your lashes on, it kind of goes with the false lashes. Um, I went a little crazy with the primer today. I'm using three primers, all right? I'm gonna tell you how it is. I used first this Nano Blur, which I picked up at Target. It's amazing. I shared this with you guys over in stories on IG. I have been using it, loving it obsessing. I love using it on the forehead. I have lines, I have 11s. This does not dry me out, but it does smooth things and helps the makeup to wear longer and look smoother. I still go in with Tarte. Press, press, press in the areas where I feel like my pores are really big and I wanna conceal them. Helps makeup to go on so smooth, you look more flawless. And then because I am psychotic, I went in with a full blown oil reducing mattifying primer, literally not just like around my nose, but borderline, like almost like I'm picking my nose. That's so gross. But who wants a photo where you have like sweaty nostrils? Do you know what I mean? If you're gonna be in a hot situation, do not forget your nostrils. If you have dry skin, but you still get a little bit of like oil around the nose, just take a real intense, intense primer. Take that extra, what, five seconds, press it around the nose and get up in there a little bit and you will thank me. Uh, you will look better in your photos and you won't have that like oil kind of going everywhere. I wanted to really brighten the under eye area. So I did go in with Luna and Aster versus the Ula Banana Bright CC stick. That one I love using for more natural days, but there is not a thing natural 
or uh, toned down about this look. I mean, literally I was wearing glittery top, glittery high heels. That was like the thing James is like, oh my gosh, like everybody is wearing glitter. Do you understand? Like why? And I'm like, this is the dress code for the concert. It's unspoken, but it's kind of like a rule that you're gonna be wearing something shiny, right? Now, the funny part is you guys ask me, did I take a single good photo that night? No, like z zero, none. Um, I'm putting on my age rewind from Maybelline. <laughs> I prefer the yellow. I got the pink. I was in it for a minute and then goodbye. I'm back to this, but I really, really love this. Very, very budge proof. I have to say in my weird time away from the internet where I was like, I'm destroyed by life. I can't do anything. Um, I did learn to be more in the moment. So that is something that I noticed at the concert. I wasn't like frantically every two seconds filming. Like my phone was barely out. I did get a few cool moments captured, but I wasn't like this the whole time. And I recommend that. Like if you're gonna pay to go to a show, yes, like grab a couple moments here and there, but it felt so good to just be like a kid being like, wow, like this is so imaginative and beautiful. And like the music is moving me and it was just really, really good. I'm thinking about it and I'm like, did I make any sense at all? like how I just like destroyed my poetry. I couldn't write music. I couldn't face my piano. I couldn't do anything. And then somehow I was like, and I can't listen to music and I can't listen to any sad songs. And so Taylor Swift was so off the table. And I don't know, I guess this was like a good night for me to go and be like, hey, like she's back. Like I'm back. I feel more normal. I feel like any of that depression that I was going through is like, hey, you're out of here. And I came home and I was like, you know, I haven't set up my piano yet. Um, I've been stalling on that and I really wanna set it up. And I was so inspired. And I think that's the beautiful thing about art. Whether you're seeing someone perform in like a small cafe or a big, huge concert, I feel like we have the opportunity to leave and be invigorated and inspired ourselves. And isn't that what art is supposed to do? So yeah, it was just like an emotional great night. It was so, so good. We're gonna go in now. I keep saying like super glue makeup. I promise you this looks good in real life and in pictures. It's just maybe not what you wanna reach for every day as far as how it feels and the heaviness or the full glamness, but we're going for long wear. This is the 24 hour color stay long wear makeup for combo to oily skin. Take a couple pumps of that. And if you see this whole time I'm talking, you're probably like, why, why Tati is your chest different than your face? A lot of you guys have asked me recently, you're like, what self tan are you using? Tell me. I don't know if I should recommend this, but I'm just gonna tell you because you guys asked. I have been using these Sally Hansen airbrush legs leg makeup on my chest and arms. I do it for filming because I cannot do the self tan thing. Oh my gosh. I hate how it smells. I hate how it feels sticky. I'm bad at rubbing it in. And so I end up with like stripes and weird things. And it's just never been my thing. I've never been good at it. And then when it patches off, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna need like some kind of sloughing machine to take it off evenly. And it's like a whole thing. Like I literally had like a spray tan blotch off so bad one time I was like in a turtleneck in the summer. It, it's just not for me. But this is hold your breath, rub it in give a couple of minutes before you put on your clothes. It does not move. Like I wore a black blazer over the glittery number and this does not transfer on anything. Yes, it's intended for your legs. So if that bothers you, I, you know, don't do it, but I have found that it works really, really well. And then I go in with a foundation that you can see is matching. And we're skipping the contour. We're doing that on top of this. I have like a method to the madness here. We're going in with blush right now before we do powder. I'm gonna use the shade Bellini from Danessa Myricks. So good, still obsessed. You barely need like a bam, just like the tiniest, littlest bit. 
And this stuff is budge proof, concert proof makeup right here. Now we're gonna set and we're gonna be high maintenance with this too, because why not? I'm gonna go in with a little RCMA amethyst. I'm gonna really press that in, fill in those lines, kind of go down the nose just a tiny bit. Then we're gonna go in with a little bit of Givenchy. Now what I did was I brought a teeny tiny purse. Like, let's do a what's in my purse. I literally, <laughs> driver's license. I have my breath spray because that's necessary. This is the pH balance breath spray from ORL. I highly recommend this one. I always figure I'm gonna be talking to people and like, it's just the polite thing to do. I brought some House of Lashes because you might pop a lash. You might cry, something might happen and you need to have that. I brought a Charlotte Tilbury gloss in Pillow Talk, which we'll be using and some cash. And I still, I, I think I was supposed to give this back. Um, I still have that, the little glow up wristband. Okay, so we're gonna go in with this triangular puff and bake. And then what I did is I loaded my puff up in case I needed a touch up and threw it in the purse. Once you have that bake set, you can take a little excess off and then just pat, 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 pat over everything else, set it all in. That way it doesn't get too heavy. All right, I'm going to pop on some brows. I used my Dior show. I'm so obsessed with this. I'm back in it big time. And you guys know the drill. I can't talk and do my brows. Utter silence and focus. I'm breaking out my super intense mirror to do this too. This is the Ilios mirror. I will link it in the description box below. It's the most clear magnifying mirror, quite literally of all time. We're getting places. I'm gonna go ahead and blot off my Laneige. I don't even have words. It's just so good. We're gonna go in with the shade Super Size Me. I didn't do my lips until I was in the car. Does anyone else do that? You know you're gonna be like drinking water or whatever. Well, I was cut off. But I just always feel fresher when I do my lipstick like last. I also, I'm kind of a mess. And like when I'm getting dressed, I have had those rare occasions where you're like pulling the shirt on or you're doing whatever and you get the lipstick on you and it's just never good. I always recommend, obviously I'm filming for you guys here, but in real life, do it last. Okay, so what I did then is I went in with a little bit of Natasha Denona, my dream lipstick. I love this one. And what's funny is I didn't even really plan this lip look. It literally was what was in my car because um, I forgot lipstick, but it worked out. Putting on a little bit of Laneige. I did go in with this gloss from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm gonna whisk away the bake. I'm gonna lightly contour with this Sigma Matte Bronzer in light. I'm replicating absolutely everything that I did. Now when I'm filming, and I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of photos, what have you, I will do the underpainting for sure. But in real life, I tend to just do this. Go under the chin just a tiny little bit. Now I'm going to lightly contour the nose. And lately I've been starting a little bit higher, lower. I just like how this looks. Do you see like it doesn't bridge up here too much. I would just go right in the actual socket to thin out this area here. And then I very lightly, like I kind of get my hand all the way to the back of the brush so I'm not using too much pressure. I will go and whisk and whisk because contour in real life, you know, it's a whole different game. If you're going to a dark restaurant, whatever, but like 
I want it to look good in real life. So we just want to make sure we're being light about it. You know, taking a little bit of Scott Barnes highlighter in downright dewy golden. It's downright beautiful. I love this highlight. I'm gonna take a Kristen Dominique face contour brush because I just want a fluffier bit to tap. Oh my gosh, what is black on here? We're gonna take the Brighten and Bake brush from Christine Dominique's uh, Sigma collaboration. I'm just gonna go right high, high, high up here. Pull down, pull down, pull down. I'm kind of avoiding this area. I just want it to be kind of high. Out, 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 okay. Yes, okay. I'm ready for some mascara, some lashes, and glitter. I'm gonna go in first with PYT mascara. Load them up, but not too much. Wiggle at the base. I have to say, one of my favorite parts of this show, when she did My Tears Ricochet, which is another, <sighs> I love that song. It was during a time in my life where I literally could just sob to that song and just like the betrayal and just get deep in my feels and the intensity of this part of the show and how beautiful she looked in this dress with the fabric, just the whole thing was so amazing. That was oddly one of my favorite parts. And then reputation, I just, I don't know if I have a bad attitude or what, but I really love the reputation album. I just do. I just like it so much. I still listen to it. Like poor James, he has to put up with like literally never ending Taylor Swift. Yeah, if there was one artist that I really just love what, their music stands for and the journey of being really vulnerable. I think it's Taylor Swift all the way. Like I was telling James, we were talking about it and I'm like, there really just isn't another artist that has invited us into their private life the same way where it's very vulnerable. It's not just like, oh, I'm doing this like cute, fun pop song. It's like, no, I'm gonna give you kind of a look into my journal and a look into me and like, I love that. I think it's something really, really special. This whole video is just me gushing over Taylor Swift, but I don't know. It's just, to me, maybe it doesn't make sense to you guys, but it's a big deal to me that I'm able to listen to her music again. Cause for, I don't know why it was just so dang triggering. Probably cause I was like sobbing to my tears ricochet, like while I felt my whole world was like busting at the seams, you know? And it did, like it did bust at the seams, but I get to rebuild and I'm I'm hopeful for that. <laughs> I'm still rebuilding, we're still in it, but if you do not fail, you're not trying. I think about that a lot, you know? And if you don't fail, you're not trying is exactly where my memory card decided to fail. So here we are, fast forward in the future, a few moments later, and I do have glitter on, and I'm so sorry that I did not capture me actually applying it. I'm gonna kind of mock apply a little bit of what I did. I took the shade Aura from the Tati Beauty palette. This was so perfect to wear to the concert. I was just so happy that I had an event to go to that called for glitter. Because I mean, you can wear glitter whenever you want. Go to the grocery store in your glitter if you want to, but there's something fun about knowing that you're going to a place where other people are gonna be dressed up and it's gonna be fun and we're all checking out each other's uh, glitteriness and it's just fun. Glitter is timeless and ageless. In my book, you can wear it no matter your age. So I know there are a few people who are like, oh my gosh, grow up. No, I won't. Okay, so what I did is I always kind of tilt back. I have Aura on my fingertip here. I typically tilt back and I go above where the liner is. And I don't mind getting a little bit in the crease. I think it looks really beautiful and actually opens up the eye quite a bit, especially if you have a big wing, black liner, you've got your lashes on, looks really, <laughs> looks very beautiful in photos if you remember to take them. Um, let's do up the other eye a little bit heavier now too so we can match. 
more is more. We just, we double dipped in the glitter today here on my channel. I will also share with you guys, I put Disco Daydream in the inner corner, lower lash line area, about a third of the way through. Popped on a healthy dose of mascara, set with a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury setting spray to lock it all in tight. And this is the final look that I wore to the Eras concert. I had the best time. It was such a good night. She puts on a good show. Make sure you cut off your liquids, go with a, an appropriate sized bag, but you probably won't be doing any touch-ups or anything because you'll be so mesmerized by what's going on on stage and wear comfortable shoes, layers, because it does get a little hot in there. It's three hours and 15 minutes of just jam-packed entertainment. Wear your long wearing makeup, rock some type of a glittery ensemble and you will fit right in. All right, you guys, that wraps it up for me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, share it, leave me some comments, go have a good one. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.